I wrote, took my debut show to Edinburgh in 2014. Um, but prior to that, I previewed the show about 30 times in about four different countries. And at some of my, one of my previews, um, there was initially a runner for the BBC who was, uh, we were working together on a showcase. So met Sean, uh, then Sean became the PA to the comedy commissioner, Shane Allen. Um, and then he uh, came to a preview um, and you know, thankfully enjoyed what he saw and saw the potential there. Uh, he came to watch my Edinburgh show in 2014. The show was nominated for Best Newcomer, which I was very happy about. And uh, at the same time, he was like, you know, I'm well aware of Dane's writing because I'd done sketch strands on a show previously. And uh, that kind of allowed me to have a springboard into some level of development with the BBC, which was very beneficial to the writing. And he was like, you know, has he got anything else? You know, we were submitting comedy feeds. So worked with liaison my manager who uh, had a few ideas in terms of other creatives that we could use. Um, and yeah, I put it together. And initially the idea was about almost a kind of uh, a journal, which would be accompanied by sketches. But then it was supposed to be, but then a sitcom as well. Um, but then I suppose it was, I was influenced by a lot of, uh, I guess, kind of post sitcom shows where people do break the fourth wall and is, there isn't canned laughter and people don't exit into the stage or precincts from the left or right. So um, I wanted to have that element in there as well. And I said, uh, you know, I, I was massively into science fiction and into like comic book fantasy and like computer games and, you know, just an undercover black nerd. And that was all permeated into the material as well. One of the questions is people say, Sunny D, what, like the drink? And uh, I guess in that respect, Sunny D is about the fact that, you know, though some things seem to be quite sweet, they're actually quite bad for you in the long term. So that could be, I guess, the pursuit of uh, materialistic wealth. Um, and then other people are like, well, what is the D for? So Sunny D and the D in Sunny D in the sh and the show itself is about, uh, it's about dreams being deferred. And then I guess declarations uh, of dedicating yourself to dreams. So excuse the alliteration there, but that's pretty much what it's about, man. So Sunny D is basically about saying, you know, what if instead of doing what you think you should do, you just did what you wanted. For me, like I said, I, I hadn't had previous experience writing, so I mean, I can write, but I, so far as uh, making scenes and dialogue, it was why I didn't have any previous experience. So I was lucky uh, working with Rebecca as executive producer, who was aware of my writing before, and also having a great management team where my manager is obviously has, she has editorial experience as well. So there were people that could just give me a very uh, skeletal structure to work with. Um, and then I could do the dialogue. Um, and I also had a Danny Peake who'd worked on Not Going Out, who was able to suggest uh, movements of scenes for the uh, story arc. So just people that kind of laid the foundation and put out the canvases for me for me to start painting this picture. Um, so that doesn't say it wasn't that difficult, as I said, because there was so many parallels between the uh, show's narrative and my life. So that was easy to put together, um, easier to put together, I should say. And then the challenge really came from the fact that in stand-up, I guess you are trying to chase the strongest punchline and then the topper um, for your punchline if you're going back and improving on material. Whereas in a sitcom and when you're dealing with dialogue, the, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, I'm going to have the strongest punchline, even as the, even as the lead protagonist. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to have the strongest punchline. You just have to drive the story and make sure that it stays funny. So it's just about me stepping outside of myself and looking at these characters that I've created and thinking, OK, you've said something that might be quite witty, but what, what would be the best way to come back um, from another character? So I guess the challenge was really stepping outside of myself and losing any inhibitions about ego or the need to have the strongest punchline and being able to distribute that amongst uh, other members of the cast and other characters. And yeah, and, this, and thinking more that they all contribute to creating punchlines and creating premises. And I guess it's like a, it appears more of a collaborative stand-up set. Yeah, I was completely uh, involved in the casting uh, in an executive capacity um, because I had no prior acting experience as well. So I felt it was important that I could work with people who uh, I had a chemistry with and would feel comfortable working with me. And um, yeah, and, and, and also just to uh, make sure that uh, with this potential one shot via the pilot, I, uh, I maximised every opportunity to uh, hit the nail on the head and make sure that we nailed it with the pilot. I found performing more difficult, or, or writing more, performing more difficult than writing, because I guess it's a, uh, 
I am a deadpan comic by nature anyway, and so I'm not necessarily that expressive. Um, so it was me learning that while you may have written something that's very good and to read it out on a table reader sounds amazing and it's funny and everyone's going back and forth and, you know, it dovetails beautifully and it can appear to be, you know, amazing. For you to perform that, it's very different and it's being aware that, you know, TV, TV that has a theatrical aspect to it that while if I'm performing on stage, it wouldn't need me to be particularly animated. Sometimes having that exaggerated move and gesticulation with your hands makes a lot more difference on a TV camera. And it appears to be uh, contrived when I'm doing it, but it'll be a lot under, very much more understated when it appears on TV. So I was just learning that. And um, that was able, I, I was able to overcome that, uh, again, by collaborating with my cast members and uh, having a great director who, um, without any prompt from me, made a concerted effort after reading the script and looking at some of the ideas that we had. Uh, so Rebecca Rycroft was kind of made sure that we had a distinct personality for my character in the show as opposed to my stage persona, which, uh, yeah, very grateful for and I think it's very useful. So there's a Dane Baptiste comedian and there's the dude from the Dane from Sunny D. The Simpsons is the top one. That show is Americana completely encapsulated. Um, and it's funny, it's a great show and it's, it's the show that launched a thousand ships. I'm going to say, because I'm stuck to, limited to three, I'm going to say South Park. Yeah, I think it's just been a good, big influence on my, on my work so far as using some very surreal uh, analogies to deal with some uh, very complex and potentially taboo uh, social subjects. I said the first one is write what you know. It makes it a lot easier for you to uh, get content together. My second piece of advice would be uh, be honest. If you don't know about something, then don't act like you know. Don't feel you have to recycle any tropes so far as uh, stereotypes or uh, include things because any kind of buzzwords because you feel it's current, very current now. Because if you care about what you're creating, you know, especially in a post-digital age, you're aware that it might not be for the people, you know, it might not be for a contemporary audience right now. It might not land now, but in a few years it might make some time. And I guess my third piece of advice would be to uh, be malleable, but don't be passive in that if you're writing potentially for screen where you might have other collaborators, no one thinks their own baby is ugly. So if there's people that can offer some additional childcare, yeah, so yeah, no one thinks their own baby is ugly, but it takes a village to raise a child and no one does it by themselves. And so I did write and devise and create Sunny D, but at the same time, I had some amazing talent that uh, lent their time their ideas and their creativity to realise this uh, project. 